everybody, welcome. Hello everybody, welcome back to another educational bird video to teach you how to care better for your bird. Today's video I have been kind of putting off for a while and that is how to teach your bird how to fly. Now this might sound silly to some people, but if you have a bird who was either previously clipped or you have a baby bird, then you are now in charge of teaching them to fly. Because a lot of people don't understand that you play a crucial role in their development in their flight ability and i will be talking about clipped birds and then baby birds because there is kind of a progressive difference in between the two but there are similarities to steps that you need to take so kiwi and mango were both babies kiwi was clipped as a baby which i find that when they are babies is the most crucial stage for them to develop their flight ability and lusa was clipped for four years of her life, she never had flight ability and Mango had full flight ability. Now, you can tell the difference in between their flight and how much wing clipping actually affects them. Mango is absolutely the best flyer out of the three. She is so fast, well coordinated. She is a strong flyer. She has really strong wing muscles. Kiwi has progressed really far. He is still struggles with lifting up from the ground in flight but he has progressed a lot when it comes to his coordination his balance and you know his landing skills because before getting mango kiwi was not a great flyer and i'm gonna say this to be honest right now having other birds that are bonded to the bird that you are trying to teach to fly is going to be such a game changer when it comes to teaching them flight. Lusa would not have progressed as quickly as she did if it wasn't for Kiwi and Mango's help. And I am being straight up honest here because that is the reason why she was able to progress to the point where she did so quickly. Her wings grew back in about three months and she was already gaining confidence to try and fly because she would see kiwi and mango flying here's my first thing confidence with clipped birds they don't have a lot of confidence in their flight ability because they are well aware that they are unable to take flight the same way that a fully flighted bird can and it is your job to try and build that confidence now whether they're a rescue or they are a bird that you got from the pet store as a baby and they got clipped you want to get them flying you want to give them that opportunity you want to let them out of their cage practice flying and you need an open space for that not only do you need an open space for that but you also want landing spots so you want to put you know things around the ceiling or perches around the room or even the cage is a landing spot one of the most important things that people don't realize and is one of the reasons why people actually clip wings is the fact that when they're learning to fly it is probably best to either teach them what a window is or close the windows entirely now i do show how to teach a bird how to to distinguish what a window is in my five essential things that you should be teaching your bird but essentially you're supposed to bring them to the window tap on it get them to like tap on it physically and it just kind of clicks in their brain that hey this is a solid surface that i can't pass through would you like to come over here someone's bullying you the other thing that people really fail to understand is that you have to allow them to have errors and injuries to a degree. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about a really traumatic injury because usually when a bird is clipped uh, or a baby, they are not going to fly fast. They are still developing their wing muscles. And for clipped birds, they cannot perform their flight ability like a flighted bird. The injuries that they are going to take are going to be very mild and it's going to be basically the equivalent of when a toddler learns to walk, they might fall down, get a bruise, get a scrape. It might be a small scrape, it might bleed a little. If it does, put some cornstarch on it, you're good to go. 
it happens and that's how they learn because birds aren't born knowing how to fly you have to allow them to learn to make errors to you know get those injuries in order for them to be like okay i'm gonna try something different this time and that's essentially what it is if you don't give them that opportunity and you're the person who says oh no i clipped my bird because you know they immediately jumped into a window and you know they got injured and that's it like you know they don't know how to fly they're terrible flyers that's not true that's not true at all it's the fact like i understand you are probably the overprotective type but you have to allow them to make these mistakes in order for them to gain flight ability. Baby birds are at one point going to work on flying and they're going to try and fly around the house and they are going to probably make these errors or they're going to find landing spots. You definitely want to keep doors closed. You want to keep windows either closed or open if they have a mesh netting. And you want to be very careful while they are learning that you don't have you know a cluttered space it is more spacious and especially the biggest thing too is that when you bring a baby bird home you need to give them time to know their surroundings a bird will take a few days to map out the room surroundings and then learn those surroundings to fly around if you take them out day one then they're gonna kind of be like I have no idea where I'm going or where I'm landing in this house. So I'm going to just fly and try and figure it out. And a lot of the times this ends up with them bumping into walls. So you can definitely avoid this. Now, if you have a clipped bird, then you're going to have to be going through exercises. And this really depends the severity of the clipping. It depends on how long they have been clipped and or abused. Lusa was clipped for four years, which is a relatively long time. So we had to work on exercises to either prevent or try and reverse muscular atrophy. At first, I did think she had muscular atrophy, which is basically when the muscles start to deteriorate and it takes a lot more physiotherapy for them to start to work on it. But either way, we did go through some physiotherapy. Now, the first thing that you have to understand is that a clip bird will have very poor balance. They might trip a lot. They might bump into things more. They will get injured more. They are at a higher risk to be attack or to be if you have other pets in the house for the pets to attack them they're at higher risk at dying because they flew to the ground and they have no ability to get back up they are at higher risk for so many things and people don't realize this and if you need an explanation to all of this please watch my video on why wing clipping can get your bird killed the title sounds really harsh but i do debunk every single reason people have for wing clipping so one of the exercises that i started with lusa was that basically we went to the park and you can harness train your bird to come outside now because of the degree of how lusa was clipped and on top of that she ripped out her own you know wing feathers because she was so stressed out she literally didn't have wings so i was able to bring her out without the risk of her flying and letting a draft pick her up because she literally had no flight feathers now a lot of people were very concerned because when a bird is clipped they still can escape they still can fly and a giraffe can pick them up and you have a much lower to 0% chance of getting them back. But because of Lusa's particular case, I did take her outside to the park on the swing. I put her on my shoulder and we swung very gently. And this was a way that I taught her balance. Now on top of this, I also allowed her and gave her more ladders, more perches and different shapes and forms. I encouraged her to go up the ladders and up the perches to get to where she wanted because she was so accustomed to asking people to basically taxi her to different places that she didn't really understand how to even climb a ladder. So you definitely want to give them that freedom if they cannot fly to have different modes of transportation that is not just you and they don't just rely on you. They rely and build up the dexterity in their feet and this further increases their ability to have balance. 
Now, one of the other things that I did do with her is that when she would be on my hand, I would move it very gently, kind of like movements like this, so that she would grip on harder. And I did this very slow. Now, you can quick, you can progress more quickly as you go and you see them progressing and you start to move a little faster, maybe a little curved. But just start off really slow and allow them to start to hang on tighter so that they learn to have that balance and control over even hanging upside down because this will further improve their balance. Now for their wings, there are two main things that I would recommend for building up their wing muscles and one of them was one she really was not a fan of but it was necessary was... And it, again, I started off really slow with this one and slowly built it up when she started feeling more comfortable with the speed I was doing it in. I would basically just go like this and drop. And then at first she kind of screamed because she was panicking, but I did it very slowly. I would go like this and then a little faster and then fast enough where she started to move her wings like that, like Kiwi just did, hi Kiwi. And then it'd be like, Push! there we go. <laughs> That's what I wanted to show. Sorry, Kiwi. Now for her, I didn't need to go at that extreme speed because she was already starting to flap her wings because it is an instinct that when they are falling, they flap their wings. But because she was holding onto my finger, she was completely safe and she felt that safety. And this encouraged her to flap her wings. Now we did this exercise every single day and this helped her build up her muscles as her wings grew back. Now, if your bird is not clipped or ripped out their feathers to the extreme of lusa as you do this they might just fly off your finger and that's fine give them that opportunity to practice flying because a lot of times when birds are clipped they can't lift up instead they will kind of just dive down this way or just straight and again give them landing spots that are adequate to where they are able to fly to depending how severe or how many flight feathers were clipped the other form that you can get them to flap their wings and do exercises is that baths baths or mist or whatever form of bathing that your bird does is a great way for them to move their wings and flap them around so lusa at first she didn't really have wings but either way she did when she got in a bath flap those little wingies she had and this was a great exercise despite there being no wings there and this helped her again to further improve her wing muscles and to just do exercises and she would bathe about once a week so it wasn't really an exercise we could do every single day because again you can't force your bird to bathe but it was something that she still tried now once her wings started to come in and again, this depends on the severity. Once she felt some wings coming in, she did try to fly because she saw kiwi and mango flying and she wanted to do the same thing. Now again, this depends if it's a solo bird, they might not have this confidence and they might have the confidence. And if they have other birds around them, again, it just depends on their personality. And she would try and follow them. So the most important thing while she was growing in her wings was that I was there ready to catch her and there was towels and blankets and just cushioning on the floor because if you don't have any cushioning while they're practicing their flight while their wings are growing in the thing is that they're not going to be able to even hold flight they are going to drop to the ground and possibly break a blood feather which occurred so many times with her and then you're gonna have to take them to a vet visit and so that they stop the bleeding they have to pull out that feather and you're kind of just going in a cycle of trying to get those wing feathers to grow in once they have grown in their primary flight feathers birds you will usually notice that they have like layers of wing feathers but once they grow in their primary wing feathers they are going to be able to at least hold flight so once they do this i fully encourage lusa to fly and test out her flight skills and keep in mind both sides have to have an equal amount of feathers otherwise they are going to be unbalanced and uncoordinated now i allowed her to fly and she would kind of just do like kind of this and she would just land on the floor and she would be scared while she was flying she kind of screamed she'd be like oh my god oh my gosh but then when she landed she was like wow i did that and it was like such an amazing like moment for her for us it was just amazing and when she fully grew in her feathers so when she fully grew in her feathers this is where basically we had to start from scratch so 
When she grew in her feathers, we had to do a lot of practice. So first I would allow her to just gain that confidence to fly. And I would allow her to just, you know, when she felt like flying and she was still, she wasn't aware that she could fly a lot of the time. She would forget and she would kind of ask me to pick her up. But again, try and encourage them to be independent and fly. And this took time. This really took time. And now I'm actually able to, sometimes she forgets, but I'll like, you know recall train i recall trained her and i would tell her come here and she would fly over and she was like oh my god i could have done that so just try and encourage don't just at first just like kind of like just leave them there you know just encourage them for a little bit and every single time try and encourage them for a little bit longer until they start to get a handle for it because at first you are going to kind of have to baby them especially if they don't have that confidence in flight i would also when she had her full flight ability i would take her on my finger and again slowly and then i started to pick up speed the more confident she gained so i would put her on my finger and i would start to you know walk a little quickly with her and she would hang onto my finger really tight, but this would get her to flap her wings. And then I did it faster and faster and faster until one day she actually let go and just went flying. And she was like, whoa, 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 what am I doing? What am I doing? And you know, she kind of made like a little circle or she found somewhere to land or I'd call her back, Luza, 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 come back. And she like kind of circle back. And like I said, landing spots are so important because if your bird doesn't respond to this, then they need somewhere to land wherever they're flying. Um, but again, Kiwi and Mango did help her a lot and they would, you know, tell her commands like, oh, turn, turn or whatever in their little language. And so she was really amazed at the fact that she was progressing like this. So every time I would speed up more and more and then at what point she started to understand that she could fly off on her own. And this was just the confidence that she started building. And I'll be honest, she built confidence a lot quicker than i expected she now flies to where she wants that's just something like such a mama proud moment so each bird will take their own time to develop their flight to develop their confidence but like i said encouragement is the biggest factor in keeping and keeping a safe environment for them to practice their flight in so lusa has progressed a lot and with the exercises that we continue to do every day and the encouragement i continue to give her every day and i try and not give in to her cute little like mm, when she goes like mm, pick me up mm, she has a little sound like that it encourages her every single time and as well one of the biggest encouragements was that she fell in love with my uh parents so every single time she'd see my parents she would I don't know, something would click and she would zoom off to them. And I saw every single day, the more she practiced flying, she got faster and faster. Like she's not at the speed of Kiwi and Mango at the moment, but she has continued to gain a lot of speed. She has been doing great with landing and she has improved every single time. And she has really just changed. And you will see that how they change in their personality and their confidence and their happiness is so huge for birds flying is so natural to them and it's a safety factor for them that it is something that you have to let them do don't be scared when they have their injuries don't be scared when they make mistakes try and adjust and try and like give them the opportunity to try again because imagine your toddler fell got scraped and you were like oh my god you're never walking again and then when they're like five years old they have just no idea how to walk because you never gave them that opportunity right like you cannot be to that extreme overprotective and i know they're so frail and so hard to and you love them so much but like you need to let them learn how to fly so that was my advice and pretty much my process on allowing them to fly and getting them to learn how to fly now because they are very slow and uncoordinated at first you can definitely be there to kind of catch them and you know stop them or you can like run after them and kind of just like guide them and they will start to learn to listen to your commands like turn turn or like no no no, not there not there like kind of stuff like that i really hope this helped for anybody struggling right now to teach their bird either clipped or a baby bird to fly dm me if you guys have any questions or leave in the comments down below i will do my best to help you to give you extra advice and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe if you want to see more of us. Check out our links down below of our, our social medias as well as our Etsy shop. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.